What's up everyone? In this video, we have to talk about some really big news and how shorts are getting squeezed in the market right now. There is hope for stocks. We can see Facebook's in the green, Amazon, Tesla, and many other ones. We have some of the most popular stocks among retail traders like Roblox, Chewy, AMC, GameStop, and Tesla blasting to the upside, and we're going to talk about what's happening right now with those stocks. Stick with me, guys. We have a very important video today. So basically, in the stock market, you know, you have longs and you have shorts. When you buy a stock, you're long the stock and you want it to go up. And then you have short sellers who sell the stock and they want the stock to go down. When short sellers open their positions and they short a stock, like I said, they want their stock to go down. When they end up closing their position in the future, they have to buy back their shares, which causes the stock price to go up. So basically, if we use Netflix as an example, it might have made sense to short Netflix shares at $650 or even $600 or 400 or 300 or any other price level like that. But there comes a point where it is no longer worth holding that short position for multiple reasons, including you know opportunity costs, maybe short interest fees and other, um, other factors out there. And when shorts close their positions, they buy back shares and therefore the stock price pops up. So basically what it looks like we're seeing right now is shorts covering their positions, especially on some of these like hype, I don't wanna say hype stocks, but just like growth type plays, you know, like we talked about Roblox. The thing is up almost 20% today. You know, DraftKings is up by 11%. Chewy's up by 16%. Palantir's up by 8%. AMC and GME are popping off. We're, it appears that we're seeing short sellers covering their positions. And I'm not just talking about, you know, AMC and GME, but I'm even talking about some of these larger companies like Netflix. There comes a point where it's not worth it anymore to hold those short positions. So it looks like we're, we're seeing that. And it's also very important to recognize that the stock market is extremely, extremely emotional to the upside and the downside. For example, when we have stocks blasting up like we did for the past two years, you know, everyone's buying in, you know, there's no fear, it's all sunshine and rainbows and it's, you know, a nice, awesome environment, right? And stocks just blast up, you know, short sellers are relatively weak and people continuously buy stocks. On the other hand, when stocks are falling down, it's very scary. You have people on CNBC and everywhere saying, you know, the world's going to end, blah, 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 blah. Short sellers are coming in and, you know, people are forced to sell their positions through margin calls and people are just scared to buy. But what ends up happening at some point, I'm not saying it's right now, but at some point um, we see a shift in that. And basically when we see that shift, like let's say with Netflix, you know, you'll see short sellers start to cover at first, but then you'll start to see people who've been on the sidelines for weeks or months start to buy in. And typically they all rush in at once, which causes very volatile movements because you, you know, you don't want to miss out on stocks while they're low. Even if we look back throughout, you know, March of 2020 on the S&P 500, you know, the S&P 500, while there were a lot of big red days, there were also a lot of giant green days with that. And then when the stock market eventually turned around, you know, the stock market moved up fairly quickly because people rushed in to buy the dip. So that's what we're going to see um, at some point in the market. You know, we won't know until it actually happens, but we're seeing some good signs right now with the movement in the market today. And I also want to focus a little bit more specifically on some of these retail stocks, you can say, that everyone loves to talk about, like AMC, GME, Tesla, and a couple other ones. So let's get into those ones. So let's start off with GameStop. Uh, GME, it actually had a couple volatility halts today because it was moving so quickly. This is a very common thing in the stock market. It's not manipulation, it's just how the stock market works. But anyways, we can see GameStop's up around 16% today. It had a gigantic bounce off that $80 support. It has resistance right around $110 each, uh, $115 each, and even $120 each. A lot of volume is flowing in. Check this out, guys. Look right where my cursor is. We can see like on a normal day, volume is... 
it's nowhere near what it is today. We'll say that. So the stock market has literally been open for less than two hours, and it has more volume today than it had all day yesterday and the day before that, and like for for like almost a month. So that's good. A lot of volumes with that stock. Um, also, AMC and GME normally move together, so AMC is having some nice movement too. Uh, it has support right around ten dollars each with resistance right around 14, 15, and I guess you could say 16. It actually lined up pretty perfectly. But yeah, resistance around there. Uh, keep these stocks on your radar. They have a lot of hype. Um, but I really do want to emphasize that options are pretty expensive on these ones. So shares would be ideal if you do want to uh, play those stocks. Also, we had to talk about good old Tesla. This stock's doing good today, but it's kind of underperforming a lot of other stocks, to be honest. While Tesla's up 1%, um, a lot of other companies are outperforming Tesla. But, you know, then again, Tesla is outperforming some other companies. So I, I do have to be fair in that sense. Like Apple is still technically in the red today. So is Microsoft and a couple other ones. So it's important to be fair in that sense. But Tesla's holding up relatively well. It actually dipped below $700 this morning and had an amazing reversal. So there we go. That's awesome. Good volumes flowing in as well. And I really really want to emphasize something, okay? Look across the market right now, whether you're looking at Tesla, Apple, uh, the S&P 500, Zoom, DraftKings, SPCE, anything. For the most part, implied volatility is very, very high. If you don't know what that means, it's all right. It just basically means options prices are expensive. I know a lot of options traders watch this channel, so I'm gonna say this. Shares are ideal right now. Shares are ideal. I know options can be very tempting when you see, when you go onto the AMC options chain and you see weekly call options that are up 850% in one day. I know it's very tempting when you see an option go from, uh, what is that, like three cents all the way up to, or I guess you say three dollars up to $39 in a day. It's tempting and I know it's it has hype with it, but options are expensive right now. Shares are ideal. Basically, if you buy options right now, once all of this volatility does settle down, those options premiums are going to get crushed, unless you're you know, just exceptionally lucky. But for the most part, shares are ideal. Shares are ideal, okay? So keep that in mind. Besides that, it's awesome to finally see a just a tiny green day. What's nice is that I know for months it's been like, you know, the stock market might be down like 0.2%, but then like growth stocks like Zoom and others would be down like 5%. And it's like, damn. But what's good though, is while the S&P 500 is only up 0.1%, we're seeing companies like Roblox up 21%, um, SPCE up 13%, DraftKings up 12%. So it's nice to see this movement. It's, it's, it's finally nice. So um, again, no one knows the bottom, but it is nice to you know see stocks holding their ground. Um, the stock market has been horrible over the past year, and it will ultimately end up being a gigantic opportunity if you play it in the right way. And that's, for the most part, finding solid companies that are good long-term holds and buying shares and continuing to dollar cost average. Day trades can be okay right now, but I know it, I, I know it does hurt when you look at your long-term portfolio and it's just down a lot. Um, but remember, like even if you were just a little bit early, like here, let's say, let's say we went back to the uh, March 2020 disaster in the stock market. Even if you were way too early, if you would have held, you would have been fine. For example, let's say you bought Apple. Um, let's say, yeah, let's, so if we went back to March 2020, right? And at its high in February 2020, Apple was around like $82 each. Let's say you saw Apple dip down to like $67 each and you bought there and then went all the way down to 53, like, yeah, you would have been down a lot. And even though you bought too early, if you would have held, you would have been fine. So as long as you're buying good companies and you are getting shares at a decent price, you should be fine. Not all companies will recover, but for the most part, if you're buying a solid company, you should be fine. So there's a lot of great deals out there. I'm very excited, even though it's been brutal this year. So we'll see what happens. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully this uptrend continues.